I wear a lot of cool watches these days. A lot. I get more comments, however, on the G-Shocks that I wear than any others. Why is that? Out of the Pilot watches I wear, the Anna Digis, the Outdoor watches, the inexpensive G-Shocks garner more compliments. <laughs> I finally figured out why it is. This is why. Because people have a history with Casio G-Shock. And it goes back all the way to the 1980s. Millions of people. And so there is a widespread appreciation for the type. It's nostalgic for them. So when they see a watch like this, a Casio DW9052, it brings back memories. They remark about it. They go, oh, that's a cool G-Shock. And then they'll talk about the G-Shocks they've owned in their lifetimes. And all their fond memories of just such a watch. I think that's why. More and more as time goes on and things change, people like to go back what, to what is comfortable for them, what is recognizable for them. And I think the Casio G-Shocks are that way. They're nostalgic. They're second cool all day long. And I think that's where this watch resides. For me, second cool. I love its looks. The DW9052. It's an awesome looking watch. And by the way, like many G-Shocks, it's super affordable. I only spent 44 bucks for it on Amazon. 44 bucks. And you get a case that looks like this. Let me tell you this, my camera is not really representing the color, uh, the color perfectly. It looks royal blue in the viewfinder. It's not. It's a navy blue, a dark navy blue. But because of the fluorescent lighting, the auto, expo auto exposure that I have to use, if I don't, it will skew a lot of other colors. It looks royal blue, but it's navy blue. I'll try to roll in a screenshot of it. That might represent it a little bit better. And in that regard, the dark navy blue, the G-Shock case, a very attractive watch for me personally. Definitely going in the Hall of Fame playlist, especially for 44 bucks. DW9052. Not sure if there are some other colors of it. Not sure if it's been discontinued. These watches just come and go. I don't know what to tell you. They're commodities. Sometimes they'll stick around for a while, sometimes not. So if you find it, you like it especially just for the low price of 44 bucks or thereabouts. Score it while you can. Let's take a look at the case closely and then we'll get into the functions. I think that's why though, people see this watch and it just reminds them of a watch they had when they served in Iraq, when they served in Afghanistan, when they were in an EMT. I get a ton of comments about all the G-Shocks that I wear. Other ones sometimes are invisible. I mean, I've been wearing this one all day. It's a Sterling. Really cool, classic looking vintage pilot style. It's only about 115 bucks. Uh, it's invisible to people. They never notice it. Uh, I guess I'll run to an aviation watch enthusiast. He might know what it is. It's a beautiful watch. I love it. This gets more compliments. <laughs> Go figure. It's less than half the price. The crystal is recessed as we see in all the G-Shock line shock isolated module notice the big actuation button so the ergonomics on this watch are excellent screw through lugs attaching the proprietary strap as we often see in a lot of the g-shock products so swapping the strap out on this might be a problem you probably gonna have to stick with the g-shock line no big deal should be durable polyurethane strap i guess we'll look at that right now a little bit of a ventilation for I guess ostensibly being able to expand and fit different wrist sizes or over clothing. But I find this polyurethane strap material is too stiff to really do that. The benefit of it is that there is a little bit more breathability through here. Single retention loop on it. And it works pretty good. I need to put probably another silicone one on there because I never think one's enough. And as you can see, it will slide around a little bit. Single stainless steel clasp working in conjunction with the keeper. And then we have kind of some stabilizers. That's what, just what I call them here. Underneath the screw through lugs. You will have to take the strap completely off, by the way, to access that four screw case back, which is kind of a hassle. I'm not gonna lie to you, it is. I've done it with some other watches. Not that bad though. These are mini 
Phillips heads there, so you'll take those out. You'll need a, two Phillips heads on each side. You unscrew those those lug retention bars. The nice thing is they're pretty sturdy. This is a very sturdy strap. And then you'll remove the four screws. And I have found that you're going to get about two years, maybe three years, out of this battery with this style of module, which, by the way, is module 3232. You can look that up in Google PDF variety if I miss any details. It's a really pretty simple module. Water resistance is much better with the latest O-rings that Cassia has been using after user replacement of the battery, I found. That is excellent. It wasn't always that way. Let's see what it looks like on the wrist. I have medium sized wrists, I guess. Oh, that looks pretty cool, dude. Guess, especially against that tan long sleeve shirt. Not doing a great job putting this on. Hey, nothing fancy. Why do you wear gloves during the watch reviews? Well, because I get such close up shots, I don't want you to see how dirty my fingernails are. <laughs> That's why. And the cuts and bruises is just distracting. Just holding it on for now, but you can kind of see. Under the cuff, wear is going to be eh, okay. You can see that the height of this watch, a DW9052, is a little bit high. Let's take a look at the height with my digital caliper. I'm so cool. I'm so glad I finally got one of these. 15 millimeters high. Lug to lug is about 48 millimeters. And then width, and I'll go from button to button. And these are shrouded protective buttons, as we see in some of the cases, the polyurethane cases, 46 and a half millimeters. So really good sizing. And that will take us back to the presentation. I, re I reviewed another watch, uh, not this one. It was this one right here, this one. So it was the SGW300HB. And I remarked on this watch here how the numerals are smaller and that I usually do not prefer that. I'll stick with that. I like the numerals on this one much better. I do. I wish this was available in blue. That would be super sick. And maybe it is. I'm not sure. But the numerals on this one, the DW9052, are basically standard Casio. That is to say they're not super small. They're not super big. They're they're okay. They're adequate. I think most people won't even care about them. They're like, yeah, they're just fine. Me, I like bigger numerals. Incidentally, I forgot to show you this strap <laughs> when I reviewed the watch in detail. So I'm going to do it here. I think guys who watch this review will watch this other one as well. It's a nylon strap. Melted holes. Notice it doesn't have an occluded case back, so I do not have to take the strap off on the SGW300HB. Very cool. Leather reinforcements. Single stainless steel class pretty simple really and then the keeper on the sgw is pretty awful it's horrible it doesn't do anything it's not tight enough i have to put one on there there you go mini strap review on that watch i just remember i was like dude i forgot to talk talk about that one here it is on the wrist this one will go under cuff better as you can see that is also a very cool looking watch freaking awesome man so lightweight easy to wear this one is only 2.2 ounces as well all the G-Shocks are just so simple and easy to wear. I just love it. Now we'll go into features. Oh, by the way, this 200-meter water-resistant watch. So this is a dive watch, pretty much. And I have dove with those Casios, even the 100-meter ones, and I've had zero issues with water coming inside. Uh, there's your module. Constant day, date, presentation. Excellent. We have some graphics there in the center just for eye candy, providing some visual interest. And it's also cool, I always said that I like the aqua blue coloration. Excellent. And it's a single color LCD screen. I'm going to show you the backlighting right now. I think it's this button right here that does it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That aqua green backlight. User selectable from one to three seconds. Of course, I always put on three seconds. It is New Year's Day 2018 when I'm doing this review. Coming into year 12 of the Nut and Fancy Project. And we change the mode. I have my beeps on. I think this one just has a single alarm, which is fine with me. I only use one anyhow. And can I sound it off here? This one doesn't do it, but it has a... Oh, there it is. You can see how I'm selecting the different alarm in mode. So there's alarm on. There's our signal on. I'm looking in the upper left right here, and there it is completely off. And then we just adjust it here. Standard. 
Anytime you mess with alarm in these basic Casio modules, it'll go back to home time, then you kind of go through it again. There's your time remaining function. There's your stopwatch function. End of review. <laughs> that's, that's it. It's just a simple timekeeping piece. There's no altimeter, barometer, solar, compass functions, temperature functions. That's it. I didn't show you it does have standard split reset features of your stopwatch function. Again, module 3232 if you're interested. Yeah, it's just a simple time piece. Would I pair this up with a smartwatch? Mm, uh, I'm saying more and more. I usually will go with a full analog piece instead. Uh, let me see if I have a different watch to show you. So here we go. Here comes the Junkers. I think this is an Iron Annie. Beautiful watch to be reviewed separately. Told you I like different brands. And so this would be more of a pairing I'd do. So I'd have a my smartwatch this is an apple series 2 watch on the right wrist and then i'd wear a pure analog on the left wrist this would be my enjoyment watch one that makes me happy and this is my first cool watch give me full technology i highly advocate that wear by the way and it doesn't have to be you know an apple you can do a fitbit i see guys wearing their analog watch and they'll pair a fitbit right next to it since fitbits uh, some of them are very slender and easy to wear Competitive options. Remember the price, $44. Uh, not a totally full-featured watch for sure, but it has great loom, a beautiful navy blue case to it, G-Shock presentation. has all that second cool nostalgia that I mentioned that G-Shock has. $44, bucks, you can not go wrong. But if you wanted one in the lineup, uh, I already showed you this one previously reviewed, the SGW300. It's going to be about $30 more. I do like the display better on this one. The looks I like equally. Uh, I do wish this was available in blue. That would be super sick. Of course the Star Wars GD350. It's going to be about $80. So it's going to be about twice the price. Very G-Shocky. Block your in, in appearance. Still super lightweight. Easy to wear. And I'm seeing if I have any other value Casios here. Nah, I got another one but it's not a value. It's not even in the same realm. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I love this watch though, the DW9052 for $44 or thereabouts, totally worth it. 200 water resistance, 200 meter water resistance, full day date presentation, and you'll probably get a ton of compliments on it because it is that gorgeous blue and it will remind people of their G-Shocks and bring back those fond memories for them as well. Nothing fancy.